Hi, welcome to the channel English Galaxy. How are you? I hope that you're okay. And really, let's study English grammar for intermediate students. And, you know, also have a look at our second channel, English Professionally. And, you know, that there are lots of interesting videos there on English grammar, English words for different levels. Please don't miss it. So, all the links are in the description, in the description below. And, you know, if I were you, I would also watch all the playlists on English grammar for intermediate students. I think this information is really very useful, so don't miss this amazing opportunity. Okay, so, yeah, you know that um, we're going to revise some English tenses. Yes, it's a revision of English tenses, and uh, I think that you'll support this idea. Right, and I have several questions for you. The first one is... So, what groups of tenses do you know? What groups of tenses do you know, really? Can you name these groups of tenses? And how many, how many groups of tenses do you know? So, as you know, there are four groups, there are four groups of tenses, four group of tenses. Can you name them? I think that you can do it without any problem, or at least let me hope so. Yeah, the first one is pretty simple it's uh, you know simple simple so the second one is uh, continuous the second one is continuous the third one is perfect and the last one i would say uh, the most difficult one is perfect continuous perfect continuous you know that uh, life is life and we don't use all the tenses in our real life, but you can meet them, so you need to be ready for it and to know how to form these tenses. Okay, so four groups of tenses, simple, continuous, perfect, perfect, continuous. And you know that uh, we can talk uh, about present, we can talk about present, we can talk about present, past and future. Present, past and future. So, uh, as you can uh, guess it, there are 12 tenses. Yes, it is said that there are 12 tenses. Okay, so present and then present simple. So, I'll put it another way. Please let me do it because I think it will be, it will be better, you know. Okay, so present. So, you see, present simple. Yeah, the first tense, present continuous, present perfect, present perfect continuous. And we can do it um, similarly with past, past simple, past continuous, past perfect, past perfect continuous and future. Future simple, future continuous, future perfect and future perfect continuous. All right, so I'm not going to talk a lot, you know, about uh, simple tenses like present simple like present simple or present continuous but anyway if you let me do it i'll give you uh, one example or a couple examples i think it's okay so and uh, i'll also mention some important things uh, which you should know being intermediate students okay so so present simple so i think that um, first of all i suppose that we need to, to think about something positive so, and you can say that uh, I want to know English really well. It's present simple. I want to know English really well. I want to know English really well. Actually, nothing difficult. Ничего сложного. You just need to use a verb. I want to know English really well. He, she, it. If we have he, she, it, we add s. So, for example, she wants to succeed in life. She wants to succeed. She wants to succeed in life. She wants to succeed in life. In other words, it means she wants to be successful in life. So if you have uh, he, she, it, you add s. So it's present continuous. It's present simple, right? So this uh, tense is quite simple. All right. So let's go on. So past simple. Nothing difficult again. You just need to look 
at the list of irregular verbs and as you know we have a playlist on irregular verbs please have a look so this courses these videos contain lots of useful examples so you can learn them thoroughly thoroughly okay so past simple you just need to to know regular and irregular verbs regular and irregular verbs so if the verb is regular you need to memorize its forms for example what most popular or what most common irregular verbs can you name such as go for example, go went gone be was were been and so on and regular okay for instance I can say that uh, I had a great time I had a great time yesterday I had a great time yesterday yeah that's true I had a great time yesterday and you see that have is an irregular verb is an irregular verb and you need to know its forms have had had okay no problem I'll give you one more example okay I played I played football I played football I played football yesterday. I played football yesterday. So, is this verb regular or irregular? You know, it's easy uh, to guess it because if we look at regular verbs, regular verbs, actually, we know how to form its forms. Verb plus ed. Verb plus ed. So, play. We have this verb. If we want uh, to form the second form or the third form, we call it past, part past participle. We say plate, plate. That's it. So actually, it's pretty easy. It's uh, pretty easy. Nothing difficult at all. So regular verbs uh, have ed, have ed in the end. I played football yesterday. And for future simple, if we look at future simple, uh, you need uh, to use will plus verb. Please, uh, will plus verb. Okay, so, and I really hope that, uh, you know, this channel will live up to your expectations. This channel, this channel will live up, will live up to your expectations. This channel will live up to your expectations. This channel will live up to your expectations. What is live up? Yeah, you know live. For example, I live in Moscow, I live in Brazil, I live in America, and so on. Whatever, whatever. Right, but live up is a phrasal verb, and have a look at our playlist on phrasal verbs. So, we'll live up to expectations. It means that uh, you have some expectations, you expect something, so you think that this, maybe you think that this channel is really good. And I hope that uh, this channel uh, will be good in your mind, in your mind that, that you won't be uh, disappointed. Yeah, uh, that's it. So, I know that you asked me to give you more difficult examples, no problem. No problem. So you see, sometimes we will sometimes use phrasal verbs, and I think it's okay. So future simple. Okay, it's uh, the it's uh, one group of tenses. Uh, simple, simple. Okay, okay. N let n let's go on. Right. Okay. Really. Let's talk about more difficult tenses. Present continuous. Present continuous. So, if it's happening now, we use this tense. You know that we form, is, um, we form this tense this way. So, am, is, or are, plus verb, plus ing. For example, we are learning English now. We are learning, we are learning English now. We are learning English now, right? So, we are improving. We are improving our English level. We are improving. We are improving our English level. We are improving our English level. Okay, but actually, but if you don't use now, so other people will understand us anyway because it means that it's happening now. We are learning English. Or we are learning English now. We are improving our English level. That's great. All right. Next. So, past continuous. Let's look at past continuous. So, we use it for long actions in the past. We use it for long actions, for long actions in the past. 
And I'd like uh, to give you a typical example. For example, when my friend called me, when my friend called me, when my friend called me, I was I was playing computer games. I was playing computer games. So you know that uh, we form this uh, tense this way was were uh, plus verb plus ing. So when my friend called me, I was playing computer games. So there is one long action. So we see it in the second part of the sentence or in the second clause. I was playing computer games. And there is one short action which interrupts this long one. So I was playing, playing computer games and then my friend called me, called me. All right, so next, what about future continuous? What about future continuous? Do you often use this tense? Why? Why not? You know that we often use this tense in spoken English. Uh, for example, I want to say uh, goodbye. I want uh, to say goodbye to my friend and I can say bye, goodbye, see you. Or I can say this phrase, for example, I'll be waiting for you. I'll be waiting for you. I'll be waiting for you. I'll be waiting for you again, for example. We will be, we'll be waiting for you. I'll be waiting for you. I'll be waiting for your reply. I'll be waiting for your answer. For your answer. Then I'll be waiting for your call. Yeah, it's okay. So we form it uh, this way. Will be uh, plus verb plus ing. You see. I'll be waiting for you. I'll be waiting for your answer. I'll be waiting for your call. You can say I'll wait. I'll wait. Yeah, it's okay. But if you say I'll be waiting, so we put an emphasis on the duration. So we want to emphasize that it's really important that we are really waiting for it with impatience. We want it to happen. We really want it to happen. Okay, so it's easy. So let's look at the next group. Perfect. So present perfect. You know that uh, we talked uh, about this tense, uh, you know, in different videos. And I think that you remember that it's very important to know different time markers such as just, already, uh, just, uh, already. So what else? Uh, yet, uh, yet, uh, never, never, uh, ever. Yeah, and uh, if you uh, have these time markers. So the most important thing is uh, that uh, this uh, tense uh, has a connection. So we use this tense when there is a connection with the present. Yeah, there is a connection with the present. It's very important. I'm not. Uh, I, I'm not. I mean, I'm lazy, but I'm not so lazy. So I'll let me write it down. So I think it's okay uh, if we take notes sometimes. So there is a connection. There is a connection with the present. There is a connection with the present, right? And uh, for instance, I think that you just learned lots of useful information. You just learned. Yeah. And I forgot uh, to tell you or, you know, to write it how we say it, how we form this tense have has plus past participle. Please get used to it that we call the third form past participle have has plus past participle. So what is past participle? Can give some examples of past participle. Seen, been, uh, gone, and so on. So you've just learned lots of useful information. Yeah, we can use a short form. You have just or you've just. You know that uh, we mostly use short uh, forms in spoken English. You've just learned. You've just learned lots of useful information lots of useful information. You just learned lots of useful information. All right, so you see present uh, perfect, so it's really easy. Yeah, what about past perfect? Well, and if you ask me how many tenses we should know, I'll tell you at least um, at least uh, nine tenses, at least nine or eight uh, tenses, and we often use them. All right, so next, what about past perfect? 
Well, to tell you the truth, we don't use these tense in spoken English, so it's we mostly meet it in books. But anyway, you need to know the main concept of this uh, tense and uh, the formation as well. So, you see, past perfect. So, we talk about the past again, but uh, you know, it's one uh, tense before. It's one time before, one time before. So, it's about the past, but one time before. Uh, for example, I told you, I told you uh, that uh, I had created an amazing channel which is uh, called English professionally. I told you that I created that I created an amazing channel, an amazing channel, an amazing channel English professionally. Okay, English professionally. So please uh, have a look at this channel. We have different courses on English grammar too. And uh, you know I am full of enthusiasm uh, because uh, I recorded and uploaded a great course on English grammar, 150 uh, grammar structures. Right, so so I told you that I created an amazing channel. So is that right or wrong? So maybe there is a mistake in the sentence. Who knows? Who can correct this mistake? Right, we need to use past perfect. We need to use past perfect here. Why? Because I told you it's in the past, right? But there is one action which happened before this action. So, so you need to use past perfect. Had plus past participle. I told you that I had created an amazing channel English professionally. Right, so this way. Well, what about future perfect? You know that um, it's uh, used uh, less commonly, less commonly. So it's, you know that, um, well, if I were you, I would uh, learn this information anyway. Uh, sometimes you can come across or you can meet this tense, but uh, we never use it uh, while speaking. We never, we never use it. So the concept is uh, quite simple and the formation too. So we'll have uh, plus uh, past uh, participle. Please compare these uh, structures. Okay, uh, so I will reach, I will reach a strong advanced level. I will reach a strong advanced. I will reach a strong advanced level. Right. So it's future simple. It's future simple. Okay, and you can ask me why. Why did you read this? Uh, why did you write this uh, sentence if we are talking about uh, future perfect? You just need to compare, right? And I'll give you another uh, sentence, right? But you need to know that the main time marker is by and uh, by the time. By the time, please keep it in mind, and I hope that it will help you a lot. By and by the time. For example, you have a plan and you want to do it by next year and you can say that I will, I will next. So what is next? Next, uh, you need to, to look at uh, how we form this tense. I will have reached, I will have reached, I will have reached uh, this or I will have reached a strong advanced level, a strong advanced level, advanced level by by what by what date by next year by next year and if you have by you need to buy or by the time you need to use future perfect so it's a rule actually nothing difficult all right you can ask me okay that's clear what about the other tenses i mean present perfect continuous present perfect continuous so there is one typical mistake or there is one common mistake which students do, which students make again and again right so i learn english i learn english i learn english for 2 years or i learn english for five years, so I don't know why, but I hear these kind of sentences again and again, but it's wrong, it's incorrect. So we need to use present perfect continuous 
because you know that we use this tense for situations so when something happened so it something happened uh, something happened in the past something happened in the past and it's still going on and it's still and it's still and it's still going on it's still happening and it's still happening and uh, please uh, keep in mind this time expression for and also since yeah so the formation is uh, quite simple have or has been have or has been plus verb plus ing so you need to say it i have been i have been learning english i have been learning english for two years but you know if you want um, to sound like native speakers you can use a short form i've been learning english i've been learning english for two years so for tells us that we need to use this tense i have been learning i've been learning english for two years and also how long how long and i can ask you this question how long have you been learning english how long how long have you been learning english how long have you been learning english all right yeah and uh, two more tenses two more tenses so it's um, you know it's uh, future it's uh, future perfect future perfect continuous future perfect continuous future perfect continuous it's like future perfect it's like future perfect it's like future perfect you know when we use by uh, plus um, for you know but there is also for for is uh, a time marker so there are two time markers All right so let me give you this example okay so we have more space but on the next slide so will have been will have been will have been or uh, plus warp plus ing okay i will have been for example i will have been i will have been uh, playing tennis i will have been playing tennis uh, for three years for three years years by next year by next year so for and by for and by i will have been playing tennis for three years by next by next year so you see yeah and uh, you know that there is uh, one tense left it's past perfect continuous actually it's very similar to past perfect but yeah very similar to past perfect but there is one difference we use for which uh, tells us about the duration for example when he came home when he came home yeah and we use it this way had uh, plus uh, been plus verb plus ing when he came home when he came home she had been she had been cooking for half an hour she had been cooking for half an hour right so actually it's the same thing so she started cooking earlier so first she started cooking and then he came and uh, you see so it's past perfect and then for it means uh, for half an hour she was cooking 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 so this uh, process took her for half an hour cooking and then this second action interrupted it so actually nothing difficult but uh, as far as I remember that you asked me um, you know to keep in mind uh, the revision so let's do it no problem okay so there are four groups of tenses you know present past and future simple continuous perfect and perfect continuous the first tenses are pretty simple so present simple i want to know english really well she wants to succeed in life yeah don't forget to add s if it's he she it right past simple you need to know regular and irregular verbs firstly irregular so you need to know irregular verbs all the other verbs are regular yeah that's clear so you see i had a great time yesterday yeah and uh, compare let's look it's a regular verb it's a regular verb have and uh, let's look at uh, how we form regular verbs 
regular verbs, right? Verb plus ed. For example, play, played, played. I played football yesterday. And a future simple. Will plus verb. The channel will live up to expectations. To expectations. I hope so. Present continuous. M is R plus verb plus ing. We are learning English. We are improving our English level. So it's happening now. Past continuous. We use it. We use past continuous for long actions in the past. So was verb plus verb plus ing. When my friend called me, I was playing computer games. Right. Future continuous. We often use it in spoken English. Future continuous will be plus verb plus ing. And you can see the examples. I'll be waiting for you. I'll be waiting for your answer. I'll be waiting for a call. Present perfect. So there is a connection with the present. Have has plus past participle. Just already, yet, never, ever. You've just learned lots of useful information. I hope so. What about past perfect? This tense is more complicated, it's more difficult, so it's one time before. So had plus past participle. We form it this way. For example, I told you that I had created an amazing channel, English professionally. Yeah, have a look at this channel. Then future perfect will have plus past participle, by or by the time. So look. At the first sentence is future simple, I will reach a strong advanced level and at the second one is future perfect, I will have reached a strong advanced level by next year. So it's just uh, because of by. Right, so present perfect continuous. So something happened in the past and it's still going on. So time expressions for, yeah, for this tense are the following, for, since, how long. So we form it this way, have, has been plus verb plus ing. I have been learning English for two years. I've been learning English for two years. Yeah, it's just a short form. Now, how long have you been learning English? So, it's a good question. A good question. Future perfect continuous and past perfect continuous. Okay, so future perfect continuous. It's like future perfect, but you need just to keep in mind that uh, there is four and will have been plus work plus ing. So I will have been playing tennis for three years by next year. And past perfect continuous. It's like past perfect, but we also have four had been plus work plus ing. So when he came home, she had been cooking for half an hour. Okay, thanks a lot for your support. I really hope that you liked this format of video. Thanks a lot. Bye.